Hey, what's up guys? My name is Eterno and welcome to episode 48 of Game Programming. So, today we're going to take a look at animating our lovely, lovely player, King Cherno. So, um, last time we talked about this 32 size sprites and you know that if I open up paint.net, you can see that we've actually got a lot more than just that little thing, right? We've got all these different things. Now, we're, I'm actually going to split up the episode about animating into two episodes because um, there's two different animations that go on here. The first animation that goes on here is which way is he facing? So there's when he's going up, I guess, up or forward, when he's going right, when he's going down or what else is the other one? He's going down or backwards, I guess. Would that be backwards? Yeah, that would be backwards. Down, backwards, and the final one is left. Now, these are kind of redundant and like these two, because we could just flip this one with using co using code and actually get that result. You know what I mean? Like we could we could just like scale it horizontally to like negative one hundred percent if that's how you roll. I don't know if you guys understand that terminology, but the short answer is we could just flip flip this right image in code to get the left image, and thus we wouldn't actually need to paint that. But the way I see it, you know, you might as well. It'll be easy to do it. I mean. Um, the person who sent me this, Andy Wall, he actually, um, I, you know, I didn't actually ask for this. So, <laughs> so he, um, he did it this way. Um, if I was drawing it, I probably wouldn't bother. Like, it's not hard to do. You can just duplicate this one and then flip it right in Paint.net or any other image, image editing software. But, um, you know, I guess the point is that it, you don't really need that. It's kind of, you know, redundant, but it's all right. We'll work with that. So that's going to be the first thing that we're going to deal with, the directions. So in other words, when we're going down, we want to use this particular sprite. Now, that's great. Let's close our game. I really like that shade of blue, by the way. It's awesome. I'm going to use that shade of blue for water when we get around to that. Right now, it's just the void tile. Um, okay, so, hmm. Uh, I can't. I can't wait to finish this player stuff and get and get and get into like actual level level design. That'll be so sick. Anyway, um, first thing I'm gonna do is actually create all the sprites. So you can see that right over here, that's like five down, I believe, on a 32 size scale. Um, and then we've got one across, two across, and three across. So one across is right. Uh, two across is down, and three across is left. Okay. So let's let's go back into Eclipse and. Over here in our sprite.java class, we'll um, we'll get rid of this player for now. The uh, the one that was four corners, four different um, things since we're using the 32 size one, and I'll rename this to something like just for you guys, just to help you guys understand. Um, I'll probably just call him player forward. Um, all right, or player up. That's that's that one. All right. So I'll give it a nice elaborate big name. I I probably would have just called it something like player F if I was just doing this for myself, but um, just for you guys, I'll keep this nice and clear. Um, so we'll duplicate that three times, right? And we'll make player back, whoops, backward. We'll call it player back. Uh, player left and player right, okay? And over here, I think the back one, I'm just alt tabbing between these, back one is number two across. So num by, by number two across, I'm talking of course about the X um, location of the pixel from which the sprite starts. So in other words, that's gonna be zero, remember? That's gonna be one, that's gonna be two, and then that's gonna be three. So the, the one that's going backwards is, uh, is this one, which is number two across. So zero, one, two. So two. And then left, of course, is three, and whoops, and one is right. Um, okay, so again, we, we will actually be doing this. We're not gonna be flipping it using code. If you guys want me to show you how to flip a player, in other words, how to just not use this sprite, but just use these three, and when, when we come across to having to go left, We'll just flip this one in code. If you guys want me to show you that in the next episode, leave a comment below, let me know. I am actually making these daily. I'm not like buffering them, I guess, by building like, by, by spending like a day and making 10 episodes at once. I am sort of doing this daily just because I'm busy with other stuff, I guess. Don't have time to stack them up. But um, because of that, I can actually like listen to what you guys say in the comments. So if you do want me to do a flip thing, like if you want me to show you guys how to flip sprites, leave a comment below and I'll do that in the next episode. 
Otherwise, I'll just ignore that because you know we've, we don't really need to flip in this situation. But if you would like me to show you how to flip, leave a comment below. If you see someone else has already left a comment saying flip, you leave a comment as well, and also thumbs this comment up, and then um then I'll see what the response is to that. Anyway, um, for now we don't need to. So we've got all the, we've got these like four sprites now. Now what we'll do is um, actually apply them. So you can see here in the player class, first of all, we've got a bit of a problem here because, um, yeah, because of that. Now, because we renamed it. Um, okay, let's figure out how we're gonna do this. So there's a way that I like to do it, okay? And I actually like to make a private sprite variable for myself. And this sprite variable is actually going to be the sprite variable that gets applied to the player. So right now, for example, right, the sprite variable is equal to sprite dot player forward. Okay, let's just check that check that out. So yeah, there we go, that works perfectly. Right, that's what the sprite variable is equal to, to that. Now if we go into the mob class, which of course is the super class of player, if we go freaking control click on that, it's not working. There we go. I don't know. I don't know what that was all about. But um if we go into the mob class, we can see that we've got this protected uh, integer variable that's um, called direction, right? It's equal to zero right now. And um, we've got four directions. Luckily, we don't have one direction. Get it? Haha. <laughs> anyway, we've got four directions. And um, that's basically zero is up, um, two is down, three is left, and one is right. So using that, because we know which way we're currently heading, we can change the sprite accordingly. So all we have to do in player uh, is say that, you know, if the direction is equal to the appropriate direction for that particular sprite, so if the sp so if we're traveling upwards, which is player forward, so in other words, if the direction is equal to what, zero, uh, then let's display that sprite. Otherwise, you know, let's just go through all the list. So that's all you really need to do. If the direction is equal to, um, I'll just do one, two, three. Right, and one is right, so we'll just display player right. Two is down, so we'll display player back. And three is um, the other one, which is left. And that's it, right? That is it. One thing we need to make sure is the uh, initial direction, because if we don't play, if we don't press a single arrow key or any other control that we've bound to actually move, it's not going to know. So, in other words, I, I usually would set something to negative one, which means that basically don't record any input until something's done. Um, that wouldn't work in this case because, well, you know, it just wouldn't know what sprite to display and it wouldn't display a sprite at all. So, it, in fact, in this case, it'll, cra it'll crash with a non-pointer exception. Um, yeah. So, just, just in case, I, I like to be safe with my code. I actually really like going through code and changing it so that, um, you know, just in case something weird happens, it doesn't crash the program. So, which is why in player, like when we're actually making the player, or even up here, I'd probably set the sprite. I'd probably do it in here though. Um, I would, just in case, set the sprite to play dot forward. All right, in this case, we're taking care of it because this will actually be zero, not negative one. But, you know, just in case we decide to, for, for whatever reason, set it to negative one and then start the game. I don't know why, but you know, you, you gotta just make sure you got everything covered. Just in case, I, I just wanna, set a sprite to something so that sprite doesn't equal null because if for some reason it tries to input this sprite object into render player and it goes through render player and it gets up to the part, the part where it needs to get sprite.pixels it's gonna crash with a null pointer exception because the sprite object is equal to null therefore there's no pixels variable all right that's something you just need to what you just need to watch out for so let's launch our game and see if this works and look at that like a boss we are working um, so that's, that's pretty cool. I'm trying to act as, as, as like, what do you call it? As amazed as I can. Obviously I've, I've seen this a thousand times before, so it's not that cool. But, um, just for, for, for the sake of you guys. Wow, this is the coolest thing I've ever seen, dude. This play is totally awesome. This totally worked. Awesome. Um, so yeah. Anyway, guys, I hope you enjoyed this episode of Game for Grang. Uh, don't forget to, to tell me if you want me to do the sprite flipping thing. Otherwise, we'll go on to actual actually animating the player the second, I guess, not, 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 not the second way, but the second step of animating the player. So obviously actually making his legs move and his, yeah, his legs move. So yeah, anyway, I hope you enjoyed this episode of Game Programming and leave a like if you did and I'll see you later guys, bye.